I took a walk around the world to ease my troubled mind. I left my body somewhere in the sands of time. If I go crazy, will you still call me Superman? This is uh, Three Doors Down's Kryptonite song lyrics. Um, I lived it. Uh, I want to explain to you, plus show you the real me. And I'm going to do something different than I've ever done. I'm going to record a longer video, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, my door is open. I uh, just want to show you around, show you the real me. Normally I glue the the uh, the iPhone to the, the computer with Silly Putty or whatever. And uh, this time I want to actually take it off. See, it's glued. I took the glue off. Well, it's not really glue. It's tech, tech stuff for stuff to put on your walls, which is what we're going to discuss. Uh, as you look around, you see on my walls, I like putting stuff on my walls. You also see that my room is very dirty. I plan on cleaning my room in the next couple days. Usually the beginning of the month is when I, or the end of the month, sometimes the end of the month. I got tons of soda bottles and trash, see all the trash? Soda bottles and trash and water bottles everywhere. And, uh, I, what I wanted to say about walls, see this is my, my main wall that I decorated and put the mirror and got stickers all over it and... You know, I got the Beatles and Eminem and Miley Cyrus's autograph, and I just want to show you the real me. I have pictures I drew up there of horror stuff. I like horror. See, if you turn around the other way, you'll see I put horror on the shelf. It was like the old me. It was what I was into when I was a kid. And all those movies up there are horror movies, and I've seen them all hundreds of times. Just like the movies over here. I've got tons of movies. And, uh... My, my point is, I got out stuff out of my closet. I, I went and dug through my closet, which is over there. Let's see. Let's see the closet behind the, the TV entertainment center. Uh, I got in the back of the closet, and I was looking to, I guess, I was looking for the old dirty bastard memorial from his funeral. And I couldn't find it. And I thought about it, and I was like, well, I'm just lying to myself anyways. And I told my friend the other day that I went to Old Dirty Bastard's funeral, which I really didn't. But the real story is even better than the lie. So why continue to keep the lie when the story is actually better than... So anyways, years ago, when I was growing up in my teens and 20s, all over my walls is put Eminem put in the song Sing for the Moment, post pinning pictures on your walls all day long, I'd like your favorite rappers and know all their songs. This is my bed. It's covered with what used to be on the walls. In all the different rooms I stayed in. I was you know, and over the years, different apartments I had and places I lived, I would put all this on the walls. And it's the innards from all the CDs. And they're all stuck together by the, the sticky stuff that I showed you. It, they're all stuck together. Look, I got Cypress Hill, Cottonmouth Kings, Bubba Sparks, The Game. Uh, here's Taylor Swift, 50 Cent, Eminem. Uh, just if you scroll through it, it shows you everything I was listening to all those years. So I got Method Man and DMX and you name it, it's in here. Nirvana. Nas, my point is, there's Cold, You're the Spider, Creed, I grew up listening to a lot of metal, alternative, grunge, hip-hop, new rock, punk, ska, that was the stuff I was really into because it was the youth, and I wanted to know what the youth was talking about, so 
So I wasn't listening to the old music like I do now. But nowadays, I like a lot of, you know, my parents' music, or my grandparents' music, even. And, uh, let's see, look, it's all, it's all over my bed. This is what used to be covering these walls. You get it? The entire walls were covered. It was just a wall of bricks. Little seedy in, innards. Neatly put all over the wall. So anyways, a lot of people knew that about me anyways, but... Yeah, I, I, won't, I won't like every CD ever. And, you know, I had lost them a few times. Uh, you know, somebody would steal my entire CD collection a couple times out of my car or whatever. And I'd have, I'd have them in a book with like 300 CDs and somebody would steal it out of my car. So, I just think of that as a blessing as well because whoever took those CDs learned a lot. But look, here's there's Miley, Demi, Selena, and Taylor mainly right there. And then there's just random stuff I was listening to recently like Kanye and the Aquabats and the Doors and Hendrix. Back here in the back, all the, the top row is all metal. I have every, every major 90s and 2000 metal band and CD. And the bottom row is all hip-hop. I have every major exactly the same thing, right? And down here, I have a drawer, and these are older. These are, well, some are the continuation of the metal, but then also in the back there are on the side over here. I've got... Uh, Punk and Ska, so I have like all the Punk and Ska from, that was what I was originally into, before grunge, well maybe around the same time as grunge, I don't know, grunge and then Punk and Ska and then metal and then hip hop and rap and, you know, I, I got into all of them and I learned every genre, I learned every song, every lyric, every album, <coughs> they're my idols, and I know it's wrong to have idols, but I would hope to be their idol someday, even though idolism is wrong. And, uh, so I was looking for the old Dirty Bastard memorial because I wanted to, you know, I don't know. I couldn't even find it. And it doesn't matter. It wasn't the truth. I, I, didn't even, I didn't go to old Dirty Bastard's funeral. The story's more interesting. A girl that was dating my brother brought the flyer to me, the memorial from Old Dirty Bastard's funeral, she actually went to the funeral, and, uh, her name is Alicia, if any of y'all know her, and, uh, she said she, she knows that, that I would like to have this, because she knows I'm a fan of, you know, the entire Wu-Tang Clan, always was, and, uh, my point is, It, it went from the old, old Dirty Bastards funeral to being in my hands and being on my walls for years. And I read it many times. I know his name is Russell Tyrone Jones. And his birthday is November 15, 1960. And he died November 13th, I believe. I want to say 96 or 97. And uh, I, I haven't read anything. I haven't even checked his white guy in forever. But Wikipedia... I always say Waikai, but I mean Wicca, whatever, you know, but, uh, so anyways, what I was saying is that the story is more interesting because it made its way from Brooklyn all the way to me, and we have the same birthday, November 15th, only I was born 20 years later in 1980, and, uh, he's the only member of the Wu-Tang Clan that has died up to this point. And I feel as though the name Big Baby Jesus that he changed his name to shortly before he died, maybe even the reason why someone killed him was because he was, you know, the person he was saying he was Jesus. So it made me think, well, I'll, I don't know. if I don't want to say that he was the first coming of Jesus because obviously we know the first coming of Jesus was in the Bible 2,000 years ago. My point is, the Bible says that people will speak in Jesus' name and not be Jesus in the end times. So, I took it as a sign as though I wanted to speak in Jesus' name. Even, you know, regardless if I am or are not Jesus, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's irrelevant because 
I'm just here to teach and preach and and share what I've learned and maybe even influence the bands and artists that influence me to you know give their lives to Jesus and and sell their soul and it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect I mean I just a couple days ago I lied again and I can't help it sometimes I just say things off the top of my you know or type things even without thinking what I'm thinking you know especially if I'm caught in the moment I try to like be have the upper hand even though you know even though if I have to lie to have the upper hand but you know even that's a sin I repented for it so I thought about it and uh I don't know as you see being able to work works both ways but uh yeah maybe it was for the reason of getting all this stuff out to look at this stuff and I found my old lyrics from when I was in my 20s I, I was going through them like this stuff I you know lyrics stories I even found my resume it's in here somewhere I found the love spell that I cast on on uh Miley and Demi and Selena and Taylor actually it was a love spell a protection spell and an abundance spell a healing spell and a creativity spell and I cast them all on Miley Demi Selena and Taylor when I was trying to you know when I was getting into I was watching Wizards of Waverly Place and thought magic was cool and wanted to be, be a magician and I don't know it, it's escalated over the years I've, I've you know I even have a crystal ball you know here's my desk well my dresser I mean you can see I've got piercings I've got a Pez Superman and Golden Cobra, like Limp Bizkit says, and candles, and a three-headed dragon, and two Marvin the Martians, and there's my crystal ball right there, and the, a Superman duck, and Alice in Wonderland doll, oh, or porcelain doll, and a bomb from, Marvin, from Mario, and Rubik's Cube, and Batman, Batmobile, and a Batman toy, and a, a bleach hair dye, and here's some more of that stuff. See, I, it was, I like sticking stuff on the wall. So that was my creativity. I got a gold painted lion and a hat a girl gave me. And the night I met Miley Cyrus, I took home a different girl. And she was older, my age. But it turned out she was in, married to a guy in the Navy, so I didn't sleep with her. And I still have never slept. You know, that was over 10 years ago. I still have never. It's her name is Jillian. I never slept with anybody since then, even before her. I didn't sleep with Jillian or any, or Miley or anyone before her. See, here's some more of the more of the pictures. You know, there's Bad Religion and White Zombie. I, I studied everything. I here's more of my lyrics and drawings. See, so just go through and see what I was thinking at the time. I wrote that song, Suicidal Fantasy, after I came up with here's song title names for my first album. That's when I was thinking of things for my first album. But that's what made it and what didn't different thing here's old lyrics some bells lyrics lyrics I watch well these are some well these are the older ones the ones that are typed out they uh they're the, they're the oldest I, I wrote we didn't start the fire actually probably 15 years before I actually the the remake of we didn't start the fire I wrote like 15 years before I actually did it the ones that are printed, these, the ones I wrote with my fingers, they're newer. These ones that are in the red lettering were from when I was on MySpace, and I was writing them on MySpace and posting them to MySpace, all the different ideas I was having. Uh, the ones that are typed out are around the same time, too. Uh, but I, I, look, here's, that ended up being part of a song, and those are just ideas for songs. So... That's in the, that's the end of the song locked in the locked in a cage. So I uh, it's exhausting I uh, dealing with the things that I've I've been through, and I know that it was all for a purpose. It was all for a reason. Nothing you know there is no such thing as coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. Uh. I believe in destiny, which is everything's on a true path, and 
you know, you can choose to walk right or left, but in the end, you know, you can choose to follow God, or you can choose to follow the devil, or you can, you can make your own path, you can choose to follow no one, you can be an atheist, you can be a, you know, what I'm saying is over all of it, I came back to Jesus Christ because that's what I felt most strong about. And I, when I was 21 years old and uh, getting out of the army, I got, well, I was in the army for like, I got married, joined the army, 9-11 happened, I went to boot camp, spent three months in boot camp, went AWOL. Uh, here's where we're talking about uh, walking the world. So my wife cheated on me while I was in the army. And we'd only been married a few months, so I came home and, you know, we tried to work it out and did drugs together and experimented with ecstasy and it was just a big mess. And I ended up getting Baker acted several times and being put in mental institutions and I'm, I'm, show, I'm showing you the, the negative side of me because I want you to understand that I came out positive on the end. I'm not, I'm, I don't feel as though I'm, there's anything wrong with me anymore, uh, my mentality is fine, I'm, I'm not insecure, or, uh, I don't fly off the handle, I don't do anything rash, or spur of the moment, I'm not, okay, let's back to the story, I got divorced, moved back in with my mom, Left several times, either on foot or in cars. Wrecked several times, cars without an accident, without a lot of without a scratch. I jumped out of the window before wrecking. When a car was spinning out of control one time in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I got jumped in in uh, downtown Cincinnati, Ohio, wearing shorts that said uh, "Jesus Christ, Gangster of Love," which my uncle had made for me. Red red shorts that was the only thing I was wearing walking down the street in Cincinnati Ohio after I wrecked my car in I think Cleveland uh, my point is I walked the world because of my troubles because when I got baptized saved in 20 at 21 baptized saved and born again uh, Christ came into me and I remembered all my sins at once Everything I had ever done that was wrong, I knew it was wrong immediately. And I'd never experienced, felt that or experienced that before. And my first urge was to tell everybody my sins. And which, you know, I, I people still make fun of me. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. You can make fun of me all day. But in the end, God forgave me for everything that I did when I was a child, before I turned 21, before I got baptized, saved, and born again. And I've lived by the Ten Commandments pretty much. You know, I'm not perfect. Like I said, I lied just the other day, but, you know, realized I lied and didn't take it back. And so now I'm taking it back just because. But uh, what I'm saying is that no one's perfect. Only Jesus was perfect. We're all sinners. Uh... There were other times that I got lost in the woods. You know, I, I ran away one time, and uh, I ended up in North in Jamestown, North Carolina, and got lost in the woods for like three or three days, or maybe more. I don't know. It depends on whose story you listen to. But I, uh, I got lost in the woods, and uh, ended up. You know, I wrote a story about it. And most of the facts were true that I threw my lyric book folder all over the forest floor and ran through the thorns stripping my clothes off and got naked and ran through the woods for days but the Bible says God will lead you into the wilderness and uh, speak tenderly to you so it, it's just another experience that I had I felt like I was crucified because I was cut with thorns from head to toe and I liked the pain at first until, you know, maybe the next day when I realized what I had done. You know, I actually was running full speed through thorns for hours 
into the pitch black of night, into a forest, and it was all because of all the subconscious messages that they gave me, you know, all the lessons they taught me and everything they ever said to me. I can think of 10, 15 songs that mention running naked through the woods, you know, everything from Godsmack to Evanescence, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, they all mentioned the wilderness. And uh, maybe subconsciously, you know, Amy's, Amy Lee's songs or somebody, you know, even Eminem says it you know, on his first album. Uh, and talks about talks about it again on his second album about running into the wilderness so it was just one of the times I ran away I also ran away once to Nashville and I ran away once to Georgia and got arrested and went to jail and I, I tried to you know I led the police on a on a speed and chase but it was because I was you know clearly out of my mind and uh I had no reason to run, I just ran, and my trunk was trunk and car was full of possessions that uh, I looked as though I was moving, but it probably looked suspicious because I've got, you know, v hundreds of DVDs of horror movies, <laughs> so they probably were suspicious of my possessions, but I, I didn't do anything, I, I had no reason to run, I just ran, and they jumped me and beat me up after they finally caught me, and I, I, uh... And I even forgive them, so, and they were just doing their job, they probably thought I was on drugs, or they didn't realize I was schizophrenic, and didn't know right from wrong at the time, because I wasn't properly medicated, which today, I, you know, and for the last five, six, seven, eight years, I, I've been properly medicated, and I control myself now, I'm just, I, I went through a lot, growing up, listening, you know, especially to see Eminem in the background, I, uh, I was a big fan of Eminem, I don't want to be Stan, but I am, so, the problem with that is that Eminem psychosis drives people insane, especially me, because I felt as though it was all directed at me personally, because I'm pretty sure it was. So, that's why I call myself Slim Shady in some of my songs. But, uh, it, it's fine. It, it just made me stronger. And I realized he never meant to hurt me. But, and I, like, same with my music. I'm not meaning to hurt anybody, but I know I probably am. But they'll recover and be better for it. And I know that. Because the same thing happened to me. The same thing that's happening to you now, listening to the music that I'm playing in my the YouTube video playlist that I do at daily on online. You know, it's learning a lot of the information fast, and you might you might fall off your rocker. And if you do fall off your rocker, just get back up and keep going. So, but uh, if I go crazy, will you still call me Superman? I took a walk around the world to ease my troubled mind. I left my body lying somewhere in the sands of time. Really resonates with me. Because I lived it. I walked from here to Texas in 2012 because I believed the world was going to end and that the East Coast was going to be underwater. Because I had a friend, same friend I lied to the other day. Uh, I had a friend that convinced me that the world was going to end in 20, December 21st, 2012. So, I based my whole life around the world ending and didn't give a shit about anything because I thought it was going to be over soon. And it's not. It's 2017. And that was five years ago that, you know, I realized that things aren't always what they seem and that things can change and people change. And Again, at 21 years old, I got baptized, saved, and born again, and confessed all my sins to all my family members, and some of my friends found out some of the details, and they still judge me for those things, even though God already forgave me for everything that I did before I was baptized, saved, and born again. And He forgives me for the things I do today, because I repent and ask the Lord to forgive me, because I'm still not perfect. I'm still making mistakes here and there. And I'm everybody always will always continuously make mistakes, and you, you can't 
you can't walk around bitter and mad and hating people and judging people based on mistakes they made because you're making some mistakes as well and if everybody walked around judging everybody only you know only God can judge me and only God can judge you so if you walk around judging other people for the mistakes they made for their life you're holding somebody back that's trying to better themselves a lot of the times and especially in my case that's what happened so I felt as though I was unfairly punished by friends and family for confessing my sins and I'm not even ashamed of anything I've been through because I knew it was all for a purpose, all for a reason to make me see that I was wrong and that what what was what is right and what is wrong. So now I know the difference between right and wrong and I won't make those same mistakes ever again because I learned that I learned the, uh, the truth, and I learned what's real and what's right, and what's good and what's bad, and you see, my door is open, you know, my door is open, Jesus' door is open, you can come to Jesus, Jesus will forgive you for your sins, it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter which commandments you broke, ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, and you know, that's the point of the story. But I want to discuss one more thing with you. It's I was going to let this video be 30 minutes long. And uh, I've already talked about a lot of stuff. And briefly touched on lots of stories. But, you know, it would take a video for each of those stories for you to understand that I, I literally, I ran away from home probably 20 times. A lot of it had to do with being judged and criticized at home. And, uh... I would walk or drive away from Jacksonville, Florida, and just go different places. Whether I was trying to go home to Detroit, Michigan, where I was born and lived until I was six years old, I'm getting out of my Bible. See, I'm looking up a verse, and I want to explain it to you real quick before the 30 minutes is up, because I decided this video is going to be 30 minutes. So we want 2 Timothy 3.16... I believe that's the verse that I was thinking of. I don't think I've already went too far. So. But uh, this verse stuck with me. I, I read it once and I thought about all the other verses in the Bible that speak differently of... I can't even find it now. Isn't that crazy? But uh, I'm, and I'm, the crazy thing is I learned the books of the Bible in school. So I should know where Second Timothy. It's in the, it's in the New Testament, isn't it? Yes. I'm, I'm not even close. Cause I'm talking to you and not paying attention to what I'm doing. Here we go. If I can find what I'm looking for, I'll explain it real quick. There we go. Second Timothy. Three sixteen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for righteous, I'm sorry, for instruction in righteousness. Again, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. One of the only verses I have highlighted in my Bible. And you know what that verse makes me think of? It makes me think of all the other verses that say it's not okay to do whatever, you know, from tattoos to piercings to whatever it is, the Bible, and people judge you for your choices, your decisions, especially before being saved, or it's profitable for correction, for reproof, saying that the Bible, even though it's an outline or it's an outline for what should be. It's not necessarily the guideline for what is now, 2,000 years later. I, I, I'm speaking on homosexuality. I'm speaking on lesbians. I'm speaking on tattoos, piercings, sex before marriage. Look, just follow God and be happy with your life. Put Jesus first. 
get baptized, saved, and born again. It'll all work out. Whatever happened to you, it'll all work out. I promise you. This is 30 minutes exactly. I'm going to go another 3 minutes just because I'm not finished with what I'm saying. Uh, make it 33. 33. I'll try and try 30, 30, 33. If I can stop it per, per, exactly. But uh, my point is that, you know, there's nothing wrong with making mistakes, trial and error, learning from the mistakes, choosing not to make those mistakes again. We were all children once. We, we thought as a child, we acted as a child, we behaved as a child. When we became men or, men or women, we put away the childish actions and, and you, know, you know, changed. We're not the same person we were, or at least I'm not. I was baptized, I was born again at 21. I am 36 years old. I turned 37 in November. I have learned my lessons. I, I, I know the difference between right and wrong, and I, I have no intention of doing anything to intention, you know, intentionally break the Ten Commandments. You know, I occasionally say the Lord's name in vain, and I know it's wrong, but I do it in the name of Jesus, so is it wrong or right to do it in the name of Jesus? And people will question that as well. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot to take in. But back to what I was saying. If I go crazy, then will you still call me Superman? If I'm alive and well, will you be there holding my hand? I took a walk around the world to ease my troubled mind. I left my body lying somewhere in the sands of time. See, this whole thing I'm referring to Kryptonite by Three Doors Down. Uh, point is, life is unexpected, trials and tribulations, learning, growing, strengthening your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit, uh, everything is divine inspiration given by the inspiration of God. What was wrong 3,000 years ago, or I'm sorry, 2,000 years ago? might not be considered wrong today the bible says those things are against god's will i say if god would, was to write a sequel to the bible i'm sure there would be a lot of things that he would change or correct or update which is by second timothy 3:16. all inspiration is given by god and is profitable for reproof for doctrine, for correction in righteousness. Get baptized, saved, and born again. That's the first step. Put God first. That's the second step. Third step, follow the Ten Commandments. If I was to be second, that's what I would tell you. This is another... I am second, Jesus will always be first. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.